Hello everybody and welcome back to Slow Your Roll. I'm Cody and today I'm going to be trying to do something a little bit different. I mean, you saw the title. I'm going to be playing DC20 solo. Okay, uh, I'm going to do another video if I can specifically kind of describing exactly how you would play a solo TTRPG if you're not familiar with that concept. Uh, but basically the concept is you have a couple things that emulate a GM. So um, it, I, I'm using all digital stuff, but I'm using, let's see, I have um, G, uh, GM's Apprentice up right now, which is a thing that is based on the Game Master's Apprentice base deck by Larsenus Designs. Um, but uh, a guy named James Turner ended up making it a little like online thing. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for that too, just so you have an idea of what I'm using for that. Uh, but that is uh, a really good way. It uses some stuff to emulate random events. It's basically just like, here's random blurbs of inspiration for you to think about something without using your own thoughts to some degree. You know what I mean? Like it gives you information and then you're like, oh, okay, what if that means this? So uh, for a quick example, uh, I'm just gonna reroll it real quick. Okay. Uh, so like a random, like descriptive phrase, if you will. Um, so I'll say like, uh, oh, let's say I run across another merchant, uh, but he seems a little weird. What about him seems weird? And I'll click roll and it's like, okay, his, the words come up. It's like deviate amicable fear, right? Um, so maybe this guy is trying to act like he's not afraid and you're like wait a second why is he hiding that he's afraid is it because someone's about to ambush him and he knows it and he's like being the bait uh something like that right now you've got see i didn't i didn't uh i wouldn't have thought of any of that on my own but that's how it works so anyway using gm's apprentice long story short let's just get to this thing i will make another video describing how you can set up your own game solo so <clears throat> i am going to be using alchemy as well uh, for kind of some of my background stuff um, and some of my digital roles so you can see my roles easily and you know all that uh, and I'm using a scene that was carried over from a different one shot we've done so we've got some extra stuff in the corners here and there or whatever but that can be largely ignored um, so anyway let's get into this thing I'm gonna introduce my character and the game concept so far so here we go. The game in general is going to be called Vugo Axor, the Reluctant Seeker. My character's name is Vugo Axor. He's going to be a cleric. Um, basically, his, his backstory, right? Uh, Vugo Axor was born under an ominous star in the heart of the forest of Ragged Coast, a place where the trees whisper secrets and the shadows dance with unseen entities. From a young age, Vugo was marked by his deity, Natwan, we'll get there, an often wrathful god who thrived on chaos and misfortune. Vugo's life was a series of unfortunate events, uh, each one a reminder of his deity's ever watchful eye. Despite the constant misfortune, Vugo grew into a resourceful and cunning individual. He learned to navigate the treacherous forest, forging alliances with the enigmatic creatures that dwelled within. His sharp mind and quick reflexes made him a formidable opponent, but it was his unwavering determination that set him apart. Vugo was driven by a singular goal to delay the wrath of Natwan and find a way to break free from the deity's malevolent influence. So interestingly, it's a cleric, right? But almost with like the warlock feel like the deity that he serves, he kind of intentionally serves, but it's kind of just because like if he doesn't, he suffers that deity's wrath, right? So it's kind of crazy. So he gets powers from his deity as an exchange. Uh, giving him all the cleric fun abilities, but <clears throat> he uh, is constantly on the run from the wrath of Netwan. Uh, and you'll see exactly what that means. Anytime I'm going to roll a natural one, there's going to be a random event of sorts related to the wrath of this deity on my character. So that will be interesting. Uh, or on the situation, not necessarily just my character. But that's one of the things that'll be a driving force with the thing. So my character goals in general, some of the short term goals for uh, Vugo, the uh, is just to the oh my gosh, is just to delay the wrath of Nat one by any means necessary. So Vugo knows that every misstep could bring the deity's fury upon him. So he treads carefully, always seeking ways to appease or outwit his god. 
uh, the long-term goal for my character. So that's something I always deal with, right? But the long-term goal, uh, uncover the truth behind the job's conflict, which we'll get into in just a moment. But uh, Vugo senses that there's more to this situation than meets the eye, and he's determined to unravel the mystery, even if it means confronting powerful enemies. So basically, the quest, right? Vugo's latest mission takes him to the heart of a brewing conflict. A rival faction is constructing a new temple in the forest, uh, which is a direct challenge to Natuan's dominion. A rumors about a creature referred to as a monster that resides within the temple, then uh, this creature is said to possess immensely valuable information, information that Vugo needs to extort and gain an upper hand. However, the creature's exact whereabouts are shrouded in secrecy, hidden within a small secretive society. Uh, Vugo must infiltrate this society, navigate its labyrinth politics, and extract the information about drawing unwanted attention. The, uh, to complicate matters further, Vugo shares a goal with an enemy, a shadowy figure whose motives are as murky as the forest itself. So that's a little bit of meta knowledge. That's something you do have to do a little bit in solo gameplay for the most part. The whole uh, sharing a goal with an enemy, I'm not sure what enemy that's going to be. It'll just happen when it happens, and we'll, you know, the dice rolls will help figure it out. So, uh, as Vugo delves deeper into the mystery, he must balance his immediate need to delay Natuan's wrath with his long-term goal of uncovering the truth. Every decision he makes could tip the scales, bringing him closer to freedom, or unplugging him deeper or plunging him deeper into chaos. So here we go. The game starts with Vugo stealing a map from a small mercenary camp where he overheard them tasked with the same job. Mm-hmm. So here we go. We're going to start basically right there. So <clears throat> let's say, um, so let's say uh, I I'm, I'm found the camp. I kind of was just hiding out in the woods, overheard them talking about this job, and I was like, that sounds very interesting. I'd like to know more about this situation. Something about it seems really fishy anyway. Uh, and uh, I managed to sneak towards the back of one of their tents and I find a map with uh, the marked out details. I grab up this map and I'm like, this is it. This is what I need. I can move forward with this. Uh, but it happens to be right then I hear a voice behind me that's like, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. So I turn around and then uh, one of the mercenaries, they're right there eyeballing me. So let's see here. Um, does this mercenary um, immediately alert the others? So to determine if this one mercenary that finds me in the tent is going to immediately like run away and alert everyone, uh, I'm going to roll a d20 and I'm going to set the target myself. So I'm, maybe this is a 50-50. Maybe he thinks he's better off if he just handles this quietly for a second. You know what I mean? Before freaking out. Like he doesn't know my capabilities. Maybe I can just, you know, whatever. Who knows? So um, basically I'm just going to set it at a uh, 10, right? We'll just say 10. And... Uh, I'm going to roll a d20 and see what happens. I rolled a 12. So not only does he, uh, you know, the chance of 50-50, rolling the 12 basically means that he is going to quickly turn around, uh, maybe just like stick his head out the tent and uh, attempt to alert the rest of them. Uh, and I feel like he's going to do it. He's going to open the tent, turn around, uh, yell out there, and just be like, hey, there's someone in here! And then my character, my gosh, what do I do with that? I might, oh man, how many were there? Were there, let's see how many mercenaries there were. I'm going to roll a d6 to determine how many mercenaries. Five, okay, so there's five mercenaries all together. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, I'm a bit outmatched, so I'm going to try to literally just, like, grab a, a just like a simple like a dagger whatever i have there whatever and just rip through the back of the tent and try to just run out the back real quick i'm just gonna roll an attack roll to see if i'm able to do that using dc 20 i'm gonna add a four. Oh, sweet okay so that's really high so 19 plus four is like a 25 or whatever so i'm gonna say that i am able to cut through the back of the tent very easily and start making my way making my way out of the tent uh, just trying to run back into the woods to lose these guys before they catch up to me on the way through are the rest seeing me uh, leave. I'm gonna roll a stealth check um, to see how will I do. Okay, 14 plus uh, zero for stealth, so just 14. Um, and I'm gonna give them kind of like a perception check or awareness check for DC 20. Oh, sweet. Okay, so they kind of they don't do that well. I, I managed to sneak behind the tent, so I'm just gonna start bolting into the woods as I start running. Um, at any point do I do I become visible? I know at this point I'm kind of ahead of them, and that's good. 
but at any point do I become visible? I feel like it'd be likely, so I'm gonna set the target at, um, you know, if I roll lower than like a 12. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so I don't remain hidden the whole time. Um, but I do have a leg up, I'm running through the trees. Let's see, is this just kind of like a give chase situation now? They're chasing me. I'm gonna see what the GM's apprentice gives me for what they're going to be doing while trying to chase me here. All right, here we go. They're gonna use up their resources. Oh gosh, that's not good. Okay, they're gonna use up their resources to try to get me, uh, specifically through an intimidating or frightening manner. Okay, 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 okay. So what if they were like sitting around a fire? when they were, you know, they're hanging out. That's where people hang out, sit around a fire. It's cooking food, maybe, something like that, I don't know. So, basically, I'm gonna say, these are mercenaries, they're on the road, they've got some sort of alcohol, right? Um, I'm gonna say that they uh, make a couple quick makeshift explosives, or even just like, you know, like Molotov cocktails, you know, that kind of thing, uh, and just start hucking them in the woods around me to try to like flesh me out kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, if that works, it's going to slow me down. It's, I'm going to be intimidated and frightened and have to, like, take my time and, you know, all that stuff. So, I'm going to have them roll, basically just an attack roll real quick. And I'm going to add, they're using their resources, so it's pretty scary. Uh, I'm going to use, oh gosh, 19 some. That's really high. I'm going to say that they definitely managed to do that. Um, I'm going to try to roll a, um, save against being frightened, more or less, against that number. And we'll just keep it straight roll. Okay. Dang. So, all right. So I'm like running through the middle of the woods, right? And uh, these guys are still kind of in their camp running away. Got uh, a couple uh, explosives they made. They're hucking them into the woods. Uh, and I just noticed that there's just like bottles blowing up and just like fire all over in the woods around me. These guys are about to start a full on forest fire. And I'm like running through these, you know, woods. There's a couple spots that my path is kind of blocked off. And I'm just like there. And I'm just like, crap, what do I do now? Um,. <clears throat> and so what do I do now? Dang, what do I do? Do I try to surrender and just play nice? I really don't see another option, to be honest. I can't think of anything else to do. So, okay, I'm going to basically just calm down and be like, all right, all right, I can't really go anywhere. There's fire spreading all around me. It's going to get worse. Uh, I'll actually shout out while in the woods. Just be like, all right, all right, take it easy. I I'm coming out. And I'll uh, step back out of the woods toward the rest of the group. Um, man, all right. In doing that, I'm kind of like surrendering, right? Stepping out. I feel like they're going to accept the surrender for the most part. Um, and basically, I'm, you know, I'm just going to come out there. <clears throat> I'm going to try to talk to them a little bit. I feel like they might do the talking first, though. So what's uh, how are they going to approach this? Let's see. According to uh, GM's Apprentice. Okay, so I got the descriptive phrase, Avenge Psychological Leader. So basically, maybe it's just like the leader's pride's hurt. And everyone that's in the group there is just like, we got to we gotta make him... You know, we gotta, how dare this person insult our leader by stealing our stuff, you know? So, <clears throat> basically, I'm gonna step out, and they're gonna be like, why did you do this? Don't you know that the mighty Duralak the Stout is our leader, and there is no way that we're gonna let you get away with stealing from us? Um, what does Duralak the Stout have to say about this? Dur Duralak, Duralak the Stout, what does he have to say about this? Oh, yikes. The GM damage, or the GM move, is specifically deal damage, which is, like, very direct and more direct than it normally is. So, um, I'm gonna say that this guy, it says he's neutral about it, though, technically. So he's gonna come up to be not necessarily trying to kill me, I wouldn't say, but he's gonna, you know, maybe at this point they've kind of, like, the they've surrounded me and kind of got me, like, held up a little bit. And maybe the uh, leader comes up and he's just like, I can talk for myself. Old Duralak the Stout, you know, he's a very strong-willed man. So he's going to come up to me um, and just, like, look me dead in the eyes and then just slap me hard across the face, you know, just one big slap. And I'm just like, ah! Uh, and now, what is... He's like, what, what exactly do you think you are doing taking our stuff? He's like, what do you even intend to do with that map? Do you know what it's for? And I'm going to be like, ah, well, I, I overheard what you were saying. Um, I... I was just simply interested. I figured I might try to beat you to the punch, but clearly I have failed uh, even this early on. So how does he accept that? Does he seem uh, willing to, um, you know, continue this conversation? How's this going to go? Uh, with a roll of odds, yes, he's willing to go through with this conversation. So basically, uh, I'll just be like, you know, what, what exactly am I trying to do here? I, I'm going to let him know. I'm going to let him know. I'm like, listen, um, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. This whole contract just seems weird to me. I can't believe you didn't notice that. Like, have you thought about the fact that whole secret society, building the temple, like, 
who's who did you accept this job from anyway that's a good question who did they accept this job from Okay, I rolled some stuff. Uh, he's gonna say, we accepted this job from the Minister of Justice in Swift Dawn, a, near, uh, a nearby town. And I'd be like, okay, well, why? Did you ask any questions? And he's like, no, we don't ask questions, come on. You know, he's not gonna ask questions. They're just like, we were told we'd get paid if we did it. And the fact is this whole mission, like, I'm wondering if this mission, the fact is this whole mission is way too shady, you know, and I feel like the leader is going to kind of know this too and be like something about it's just weird. Uh, we don't have nearly enough information. They wouldn't give us any information other than where to go uh, and like the, the monster that has intelligence that we need to get, right? And they didn't even give a description on the monster or anything. So basically the Minister of Justice was just like, just go do it. If you succeed, I'll, get, I'll pay you. And that's all there is to it. Don't ask questions. And... So yeah, I feel like, um, what if my character, even at this point, was like, listen, what if I do this for you, come back, I don't even know where Swift Dawn is, so what if I do this for you, come back to your camp, and then we can just, like, split the profits? Because I'm confident. I'm extremely confident. There's a group of five of them, but they're just mercs, you know? They're nothing special. I'm confident. I was like, I can do this. I'm gonna see if they bite. Do they, uh, do they bite for that? They do! Sweet! Okay, so basically... I make a deal with them. They made a deal with the uh, justice and I'm going to be like, hey, I'll do this for you. All right. I'll come back to you when it's all figured out and then we'll uh, sort it out together. Split the pay or whatever, you know, whatever it takes. And they're going to be like, all right, you know what? Fine. We'll just camp out here. We'll camp out here. When you're done, we'll bring your when you're done. If you come back alive in a matter of a day, two days, maybe, then uh, we'll be all right. We'll figure this thing out. And I said, all right, let's do it. So from there. I'm going to leave their camp. Actually, I need to take some notes real quick. That's a very big part of um, solo RPG play, by the way. So I need to take some notes. Okay, took my notes. So I'm going to move on from the camp. Um, moving on from the camp, I want to go directly. I want to start following this map. Along the way, uh, am I encountering anything interesting? I'm just going to roll a... Um, encounter thing and see if it's something that makes sense and then roll a d20 to see if it actually happens so here we go so the encounter it's definitely something that makes sense and there's a natural one on the d20 okay well here we go so this is where uh nat one um <clears throat> is going to take effect here basically so there's going to be a neutral ish event uh using a monster danger or location okay all right there's going to be a creature I encounter. Interesting. It's going to be a creature I encounter. Um, is going to ignore me as much as possible. Uh, so basically, I'm going to say that while I'm traveling, right, I sense this is like overwhelming dread that I always feel when Nat One is upset and about to impose their wrath upon me. Um, and I just kind of like stop. I'm just like walking through the woods, kind of forging my own little path, not being too obvious about where I'm going. I'm going to stop and just be like, uh-oh. What is it? What's going on? It's almost like a spider sense, right? But negatively, it's just like, uh oh, something bad's gonna happen to me or the around me, whatever. Um, which I guess is what a spider sense is, for the record. Uh, now, what kind of creature is this? Is this a? We'll just keep it a simple yes or no. Is this some sort of forest, like natural forest creature? I'd say a fifty-fifty. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh boy, is it something big? Yes. Okay, so it's big. Some big natural creature. Uh, what is it, like a bear? All yeses. All right, let's make it simple. So, basically, there's just this big bear, okay? Um, I'm going along, I just kind of like stop, feel the dread, and then just like right in front of me, I notice just this massive bear. How did I not see it before, right? Just this big grizzly bear, even. Uh, how did I not see it? It just walks out in the uh, small path that I think I'm forging, but uh, perhaps this bear has forged this path instead, and I'm only following it. Uh, just walks out right in front of this thing. The good news is, for the most part, it ignores me, but it's got its young with it, and the second that I get too close, um, it's gonna it's gonna not be good, and it's going directly the way I need to go. So basically, this is just something that's gonna be in existence. Like I know that this bear uses this path. Um, it's the best path to where I need to go, so I'm not necessarily going to divert, but this bear might become an issue later. I think that's the issue that this is going to be, so it's just kind of like, right now I'm fine, but 
later down the road, this whole side side plot event here, there's a very large grizzly bear protecting its young in the wild, and I might encounter it again. So I'm actually going to put that in my notes as a uh, side event. Uh, what is that? A thread. A side thread. There we go. Side thread. Large grizzly bear lives in this region with its young. It ignored me the first time, thankfully. Okay. Now, can I make it to uh, the site at this map without any other issues? Yes. All right, cool. So I'm going to make it to the site of this little area. Um, it is at the base of a waterfall. I just rolled on the wilderness tab in GM's Apprentice. It's at the base of a waterfall. Um, the time that I get there, I actually have to camp once while I'm traveling. <clears throat> and uh, the time that I get there is mid-morning. And then it's... Uh, you know, it's nice, normal day. It's kind of like the spring, I'd say. So it's like uh, the temperature is normal for the season. It feels good outside. There's no wind. There's no rain. So, you know, very little uh, sneak factors aiding me necessarily if I'm going to try the sneaky route. But basically, there's this base of the waterfall. What's this place like? Is it what I expect? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say it's literally just like a big construction site of a temple that's being built by a rival of Natwan, by the way. So I'm going to say like when I see it, I'm kind of like empowered and just like, ah, all right. To avoid the wrath of uh, the deity that I live under, I pretty much have to commit to this thing now anyway, uh, seeing that it's a rival faction. I've got to see this through. Uh, I gotta maybe stop the construction of this temple or, you know, whatever I think might appease Net One. Okay, so I feel like the first thought that I'm gonna have is I'm gonna try to sneak up to someone that isn't really in the crowd of other people, hopefully. To sneak right up to them and be like, maybe even try to like interrogate them. Try to pull them away, knock them out, something like that. Get a little bit more information on this whole situation. So, um... <clears throat> Let's say, um, is there someone that's just kind of like out on their own near me right now? Not necessarily. In fact, even the high probability was no. So I'm going to say I got to move in a little bit closer. And to do so, I'm going to prompt a stealth uh, check to try to get through this place without being noticed. So far, I feel like this one's going to be relatively easy. I'm just trying to sneak in a little bit to a place that's not too crazily, uh, you know, fortified at the moment while this construction's happening. Okay, I rolled an 18, uh, and it is a flat 18, but that's still good, so I'll take it. Um, and I do manage to sneak in a little bit closer. Now, is there somewhere I can go make this a little bit more, you know, like I said, a little bit more uh, likely to find one person that's kind of just off on their own? Yes. Plus event. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, okay, let's get the event thing going on. Ooh, okay. I like this one. So <clears throat> the no or the yes plus event. So basically I find a guy, right? I find someone, uh, maybe they're just off on like a, I don't know, a smoke break or something. Uh, and either way, they're off kind of alone. Now that I've snuck in a little bit. Uh, and basically I'm going to go right up to him. I'm just going to put like a dagger to the throat and just be like, you'd best be quiet. I've got some questions for you or, and you should probably answer them correctly or you might cost, you know, it might cost your life, you know, that kind of thing. And so the event is introduce a new NPC. Perfect. Fair enough. This guy's an NPC. That's great. Uh, the action and subject are haggle animals. That's interesting. So basically I'm wondering if he's going to try to haggle. I think that makes the most sense. So I, I got him kind of like locked up, right? With the dagger at the throat. Uh, and he's going to be like, hey, he's like, wait, look, easy, easy, easy. He's like, I'll give you, we've got a lot of, who are they like attack animals or just like profitable animals? Let's say, are they animals that they use for, you know, weapons or like pets like that? They're not. Okay, well, fine. Are they uh, valuable livestock then? Yes. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right. Uh, so basically he's going to come around. And he's, I've got him locked up. He's like, okay, wait, wait, stop. I, I, we can work together here. I have, I can tell you exactly where a bunch of super valuable, uh, like, purity sheep are. That's just some random thing I'm thinking of. They've, they're sheep with the most pure wool. They're very valuable. I was like, okay, all right. Listen, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. But I'm not necessarily here for that. Though we might come back to that, okay? The truth is, I'm just here to find out what exactly is going on. Why is this temple being built? And I hear there's a monster inside that has intelligence you gotta, that's helpful. First off, does this guy know about all that? I think it's likely. We'll give it a, you know, high percentage. He doesn't. So he doesn't, I'm gonna say he specifically doesn't know about this animal. Because that seems like the thing I really want to know. 
but he would probably know that the temple is to a specific deity or whatever. And as soon as I hear the name, I'm going to be like, how dare you? Like, you know, like, are you associated with that deity? And he's going to be like, uh, he's like, uh, yes, but I'm not willing to lose my life over it. And I was like, well, how about this? You denounce that deity now and things might be okay. Uh, but in the meantime, what, why are you even doing this? Why are you, uh, I hear that there's a creature inside. You know, like, why why the temple here in the middle of the woods and not in the town somewhere or something? Bargain? Religious grudge? Interesting. What does that mean? Um, whoa. Okay, maybe he's gonna be like, alright. I've heard some people over, you know, like, I've overheard some people talking, and they say that this temple is meant to bargain a grudge of our deity, uh, one way or another, almost like a sacrifice, but differently. That's really interesting. And he's like, all right, this has to do something with the monster one way or another. And I got to take some notes to remember that stuff. Okay, so there's a monster inside. And I'm willing to bet that maybe this monster is being caged. Like maybe the temple is actually meant to be a cage or some sort of like the monster is there. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. There's something going on here, like a battery or like keeping the monster there is like a sacrifice on its own, trapping it there. I don't know. Something weird is going on there. So basically with this guy not necessarily knowing much more than that, I'm just gonna be like, all right, listen, you tell me about those uh, purity sheep and uh, maybe I'll let you go. Uh, and you just run off this site and don't come back. You understand? Or, or it's your life. First off, uh, he already offered up the sheep. So I feel like he's going to, you know, generally agree to this. Uh, is he, I think it's likely, so I'm going to roll it with likely, but is he going to actually stay away from the site once I let him go? Yes, he will. All right, so I'm not going to even leave that as another thread. Basically, I'm just going to say, all right, uh, so now I know where some sheep are that are very valuable, uh, and that's good. And then, um, basically, I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm going to let you out this way. You turn around, make sure no one sees you straight for the woods, pal. And he'll agree, and he'll do exactly that. So now I'm some of the way into the temple, um, and basically, as I start walking forward, um, there's going to be some event of some kind. I'm going to see exactly what that is. I'm just going to, you know, like things are getting crazy. I moved, sorry, I bumped the mic, moved up to the temple at this point, made my way, not necessarily in it. I feel like that'd be a little bit, that'd require some checks, but on the way directly to it now, encountering the temple, what is the random event? Ooh, okay, I like this. Here we go. Ready? So as I'm kind of like finding my way up to the temple a little bit more to actually enter and see if I can figure out this monster situation, it looks like they've already built some stuff maybe underground, uh, and they're just now starting to build the actual temple above it. But I see like some doors and open, you know, plot areas, so I can tell that they're constructing underground as well. But the event is uh, NPC action to neglect friendship. So I think what's going to happen here is I might overhear a couple more people, construction workers or whatever else. Um, actually, do they look more important than construction workers? Yes. All right, fun. So maybe they're actually like uh, priests or uh, scribes, you know, something not necessarily wearing construction gear. They're not just carpenters and stuff. They're like, they look like they are um, uh, actual like religious entities for this uh, deity. Maybe one actually uh, looks a little bit more like a ranger. Maybe it's like protection of sorts, like security, if you will. I like that idea. Um, and basically, that one is going to turn. They're having a conversation, and that guy, I just overhear, he's just like screaming at the other one, and he's just like, no, I've had enough. I'm sick of this. And he turns around, starts walking out, and I don't manage to move out of the way in time. Uh, and he happens to look over on his way out, right? Just like, just enough, like a glance, looks over, eye contact with me, and he can tell I'm not supposed to be here, right? So he's going to approach me, and I'm just like, crap, now what? Um, I'm gonna say there's really nowhere I can hide. I'm gonna just try to tuck into like, maybe like a small building that's right there, perhaps, or something, you know, just a little bit of cover. Um, and like lightning speed, the guy's like there, just right there in front of me already. And I'm like, oh gosh, uh, I'm gonna be, be like, uh, uh, listen, I, I don't want any trouble. And he's just gonna stare me down. And he says, I'm actually out of time. So I'll have to pick this up on another episode, I suppose. But anyway, uh, this is the general concept of running an RPG game solo. Uh, and I'm doing it with DC 20 and that's fun. So I'll do another video um, furthering this whole, you know, uh, storyline uh, and I will do another video also describing exactly how you'd run an RPG completely solo like this and it's not as hard as you might think 
If you've already looked up some guides, I feel like there's a lot of guides that are just kind of confusing. It's like you do this and this and this and this and this, and none of it really is like how, you know? I'm just gonna give you a very simple way to do it when I do it. So anyway, thank you again for watching. If you do like this, please do leave uh, some comments, likes, subscriptions, whatever. Uh, and feel free to give me some more input on uh, how you might want the story to go, what you think might happen, any of that stuff. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.